Right. Uh, this is the last panel session for today's agenda. And the theme for this session is on designing for density. And in this session, I have four speakers. Three of them are architects and one urban planner and one urban geographer. Um, each of the speakers will be given 10 minutes to talk and then we'll have uh, 30 minutes uh, for discussion. In the interest of time, we are running again behind, uh, 10, 10, 15 minutes behind. So without uh, further ado, I would like to uh, uh, start by introducing the session. This session is on designing for density. And speaking of that, uh, you've, ho you've heard in the, in the morning sessions and also just now uh, on space and density, that is interesting that we are not debating whether it's desirable to have high density or not. I think it's quite clear to us that uh, what Ricky started at the uh, beginning and also throughout the presentation, that it's not a matter of high density, but it's a matter of how to find a balance. Uh, the balance is between the, uh, the physical environment and also uh, the societal uh, environment, economic and all that. Let me, let me give you a local example that the desirability of having high density but at the same time trying to bring in what York Chow talked about earlier this morning uh, to bring in the theme of high density and, and health. Remember the SARS episode that took place in Hong Kong in 2003. In fact, it started off by somebody ate uh, some kind of exotic species uh, and then that species, uh, that animal carries some kind of a virus and then that person uh, came to Hong Kong and and stay in one of the hotels and they press a hotel lift and then it happened to, you know, that the lift button spread the, uh, the virus. And then, and then that wasn't, that wasn't the, uh, the, the end of the story. But the proliferation of that disaster actually took place in one of the high density uh, uh, living area, uh, one of the uh, uh, private, uh, private uh, housing estates that's called Amoy Gardens. And what happened is that somebody was cooking or or, or, or taking a, sh a shower in, in, in one of the flats, in the tiny flats. And then somehow, because of the uh, light well or the re-entrance, uh, because of the uh, tightness of that space, it was supposedly for, as a light well for, for openable window, for prescribed windows, uh, so, so that every flat will have, will have uh, penetration of light and all that, and ventilation. But somehow, because of that uh, tightness, the virus spread from one flat to another. As a result of that, the entire block or several of those blocks were quarantined and people have to evacuate it and, and, and live in a quarantine area for, for quite, quite a few uh, number of weeks. So it's not a matter of whether we, as a city as a whole, whether we should have uh, a high density or not. It's a matter of how we balance those qualities, including quality of living. All right, so in this session, we're looking, we're hearing uh, the four speakers, each one talking about uh, their own experience. All right, first of all, I would like to invite uh, Rainier de Garf as a partner of OMA uh, to start with the uh, presentation. Uh, each of the speakers' uh, bibliographies are all in the uh, uh, handout, and I don't, I don't want to spend more time on, on, on introducing them, so you can please refer to that. So, Rainier, please. <laughs> 